You I, won't believe what I managed to find here in Boston. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. I managed to lay hands on a 5010C access oh, point. Oh man, that's quite a beast. That's really nice. What else have I got in here? I've got some documentation and I've got a, a bracket. Let's get rid of that for a minute. Okay, so what do we have? We have a bracket, which is a TB. Oh, this is a bar, so a, a bar bracket. That's fantastic. You buy the, you buy the access point, you get the bracket uh, with it. Oh, and it has a full set of screws as well. No, don't throw that away. All right, let's leave that there. All right, so what else do we have? Extreme uh, wireless indoor access points, quick reference. So this is really good, and I'll tell you why this is so good. Because in the past, it was always difficult to get, uh, get your hands on documentation or uh, product videos or, or demos or things like that. Now, we have all these little barcodes just lined up here, QR codes, I mean, and you scan one which tells you all about XIQ onboarding. Another one is for the documentation. Another one is for product videos. And then inside, it's not a complete data sheet, but it gives you a lot of information. So that is really important don't throw it away that's really important make sure you read that wow okay as you know most most things get wrapped in plastic i hope this is low emission plastic it would be good if it is all right there we go so this device this is about a a 1.4 kilo device i think that's about 2.9 pounds so it's significant it's definitely significant you wouldn't want this to uh to fall on your head that would not be a good outcome all right, so what do we have on the back? We have a Kensington lock. This thing is, is not often spoken about, but that is so useful because this is not a cheap AP and you want to protect your asset, use the Kensington lock. There on the back, we have a micro B uh, USB, micro USB B, which is the console port, which is really important. And then we have a USB A, a USB A. Now that is really Th that is that is really important because for example if this access point is mounted on a wall or is hanging up on the ceiling and you your iphone for example runs out of charge then you can always get in the ladder and plug in the cable and charge your access point from here uh, just leave it hanging for a few hours and and that works really really well so then we have on the back of the uh, or on the side of the uh, of this access point we have a 12 volt uh, power supply option now we don't supply the power supply with this this is an optional because most people will use power over ethernet two ethernet ports 100 one gig two and a half and five gig uh, power over ethernet um, you can if you plug in uh, the 90 watt the bt uh, uh, power over ethernet on port zero then you can export uh, 15 watts of power on port one so that's really really useful and that bracket that fitting is 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 really fantastic okay let me peel this back oh i love i love this part of of this oh, oh that is beautiful what a lovely access point right nice white color fits in any kind of in uh, any kind of environment not a single fingerprint okay so what is it about this access point firstly it's a tri radio access point right it's a 2.4 a 5 gigahertz and it's 6 gigahertz tri radio uh, access point it uses uh, and has wpa3 the latest security standards so everybody security is on everybody's mind when it comes to wireless and of course this supports it as well now this is also a universal access point which means it has the ability to have two personalities it either has the wing operating system or the cloud iq engine it depends in which environment you want to use it now when you start up the device you can choose which persona you want to apply to this but that also means at a later stage if you want to change persona of the access point you can do it you just bring it up again and you can change the persona of the access point and by the way the licensing for this applies to the device not the persona so if you want to use it as wing and then later on change it to uh, um, iq uh, switch engine um, um, if you want to change that to iq engine you can do that as well now 
What else do we have? It has a full-time sensor that can be scanning all three of your wireless networks, the 2.4, the 5, and 6, to pick out any rogue access points. How that? How's that? That's really fantastic. But here's the great thing. It can operate on all three radios, do the scanning, and it can do all of that on less than 30 watts of power. Now, our competitors brag, oh, we've got this, we've got that, but none of them, if they want to operate at, uh, um, if they want to operate the entire, all the feature set of the access points, it's way over 30 watts of power. Now, that's important. Everybody is concerned about the environment. Everybody is concerned about making devices eco-friendly. Here is not just talk, here is action. All the features of this device, 4x4x4, four by four by four, all the features, less than 30 watts of power. When it comes to SSIDs, you get eight SSIDs per radio, so that's 24 SSIDs in total. Um, uh, like we said, about 1.3 kilos, 2.9 pounds, a really fantastic device. Now, you might be sitting there wondering, why has he got a frying pan and why has he got four eggs in an unboxing video? And I'm glad you're thinking that while watching this video, because not only is it really miserly with the amount of power it needs to operate, but we are going to do a world first today. We are going to see if it generates enough heat, if we can bring this up, if we can power this up with uh, with power over ethernet and give it enough power and enough load we have an audience over there i've asked them uh, to plug in or, or to connect to this access point once i plug it in and to go to youtube and try and uh, have various youtube channels running uh, throughout and this will hopefully bring up the access point to a temperature maybe let's see if we're able to fry an egg on an access point. You heard that right, fry an egg on an access point. Right. Me and my ideas. Man, I hope this thing doesn't leak. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I've got the audience over here. So you guys are all connected, right? Yeah, yeah. And just, yeah, YouTube, whatever, just get anything where, where you've got continual streaming picking up off this, uh, this SSID. Uh, we've let it run for a while. So let's, uh, oh, hang on, I forgot. Right. There we go, pretty little bow. Okay, here we have an egg, nice white American egg. And here we have something to break an egg. This is known as an egg breaker in, uh, in Boston. Right, ready? Here we go, world first. Okay. Right. We have one egg. And if you got one, why not do two, right? Right. We have two eggs. Let's uh, mix it a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. We got two nice eggs temperature definitely went down oh you shouldn't eat, lick your fingers if you have an egg a raw egg children don't don't lick your fingers if you got raw eggs it's really bad all right so now we wait it doesn't seem to be moving I mean, it's, I can't even say I could scramble the egg. It's mostly just, yeah, this is a little bit underwhelming, I think. Uh, I don't quite know what to say. This is, uh, this is a really stingy, mingy access point. It doesn't need a lot of power coming in. And when it does have power, are you guys connected? When it does have power, it doesn't emit a lot of energy. So this makes the perfect AP, right, for, environ for the environmentally minded. And it's probably not very good if you want to substitute your gas warmer in, the U in, in Europe 
with access points at home. It's not going to happen. Well, there you go. You saw it here first. The world's first test of an extreme access point to test whether it could cook an egg. And apparently it's miserable at doing that.